Texas State Department of Highways. By Buick. By Sitco Petroleum. And by Southwest Airlines. Thirteen to seven, Texas. That is Bevo thirteen. Now that's the real item. The <laughs> Bevo in Dallas last week was a substitute Bevo named Robert E. Lee. This guy got out of his pen. They couldn't find him. They rushed Robert E. Lee up to Dallas, and there is some sentiment that perhaps he should take over for Bevo thirteen because he is, after all, one and zero. This Bevo with a below five hundred record. But he's got some burnt orange on his coat, and that's the requirement. Robert E. Lee is black and white and thus disqualified from full-time duty. Well, let me tell you how Bevo got his name. Back in 1916, after the victory over Texas A&M, some upset Aggies branded the Texas mascot 13-0. Some ingenious Texas students altered the brand to 13-0. They made a B, then they took the dash and made an E out of that. They made a V. And they said, oh, and hence Bevo was born. And it's also the name of a popular near beer that was in the area. So hence Bevo, and he's now Bevo number 13. And I got all that information, I want to tell you, from a fellow named Charles Crawford. So if anybody doubts that, let him call him. He's down in downtown Bellevue, Texas. How's that, buddy? <laughs> I'm buying it. Glenn Ray Hines with the opening kick. In the second half, and the two and knee goes Adrian Walker. Still haven't seen any kicks return that have gone right to left. Peter Gardere in the first half for Texas, 9 of 15, 132 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. The possessions in the first half for Texas. You see the touchdown, the two field goals. You also see the fumble on the first possession, an interception, and another fumble. So it's obvious they hang on to the ball better. They should be able to hang on to this lead barring a huge second half offensively by Arkansas they're more than capable Bill Brown steady right in and out of bounds at the 26 yard line Peter Gardere from 0 to 15 yards you see 5 of 9 from 16 to 30 yards 3 of 5 one of better than 30 yards on two attempts. So he's spreading it out, but concentrating on the underneath stuff, which is the bread and butter of their offense. Second down, a flag is down. As Butch had not, who started this game for Texas, got near what he needed for the first down. Ty Mason was there for the Arkansas tackle. And uh, with the discussion between Wendell Shelton and Chad Rowland, appears to be against Texas. And it is a Dave, it's always interesting to see what adjustments they make at halftime, both offensively and defensively. This is where you go inside and you sit down and you divide up what you've done. You say, this has worked, that has worked, this has not worked. We need to do better in this area. Now you see the results of those halftime adjustments. After the markoff, second and eight for had not belted from behind. And very near the line of scrimmage. Mick Thomas, the man that snuck up underneath. But Texas must this afternoon. Well, first of all, get the ball out of Quinn Grovey's hands. They've done a good job of that. Have Gardere play free and easy. I think he has played a lot a lot freer and easier. Score sevens and not threes. Well, they've got some of each. One seven and two threes. Had not got only one. Third and seven. Again, Gardner zeroing in over the middle, and it is in and out of the hands of LaMel Foreman, the sophomore from Dell City, Oklahoma. Getting his first call this afternoon. Boy, did Gardner have the time to pass that time. He just sat back there in the pocket and just waited. He had no pressure on him at all. Alex waits. Both those punts into the wind. So much better than respectable, those numbers. Dean Peavy 
Tracy called well, anticipating the punt, and very low. It does get the Texas bounce, and it'll be dead at the 45-yard line, but the Hogs have great field position as Waits is victimized by that same wind that knocked down Glenn Ray Hines' two attempts in the second quarter. Now, Arkansas's possession chart in the first half, two missed field goals, the first of the year by Todd Wright, the one touchdown on the uncovered Tracy Caldwell, had to punt three times, and they trail 13 to 7. Hawks split Dickerson wide right. And the lone setback is Jackson. Play action, Groby. Caldwell. Knocked out of bounds by Stanley Richard. And with all the worry about Derek Russell, as Caldwell goes for 21, he has been uh, much tougher for the Horns to deal with. Absolutely, and what a fake by Quinn Grovey into the fullback on that play, pulled it back out. Now there's where Grovey has had his passing breakdowns. Zero to 15 is two of four, 16 to 30 yards, he's two of two. He's had a good day spreading it out also. Jason Grant in motion. E.D. Jackson, maybe one. Anthony Curl and Brian Jones were there from their respective linebacker spots. Good look at the sophomore from Aldine MacArthur and the Arkansas must today. Well, of course, play Arkansas football. Let's grind it out on the ground, set up the pass, turn over the ball. They've done that. They haven't capitalized. Stay in the game early. They are in this football game before they got behind so bad and make big defensive plays, and they've come up with an interception and a couple of fumbles, so they've, they've played pretty well. Will be second and nine. Derek Russell ahead of Grady Katniss. A flag is down as Russell goes out at the three-yard line. And we'll see if they call it back. They will. Hold it. Well, I mean, Quinn Grovey got stuck on this play. A hold up on the line is going to negate a tremendous gain down to the inside the three-yard line. And look at Jack Grovey. Oh, when a coach puts his hands up on his hips. Wow. But watch the hit Grovey takes right here. He knows he's going to get hit. Throws the ball, and boom, down he goes. James Patton. There was the flag on the play. You saw it flash in, and that negates. That's about a 40-yard penalty because instead of having the ball on about the two-yard line, they now have it back on the 39, almost 40-yard line. Really, it ends up a net loss of 36 yards from the three to the 39. And Virginia safely to halftime, and that struggle with Wake Forest. Still second down, but Groby now needing 19 yards. Might have been early movement. Ron Dickerson driven out of bounds by Cadness, and there are no flags despite the fact it looked like the right side of the hog line got off a bit early. Oklahoma off to an early lead, as is Houston. Now 20 to nothing in the first. Jack Curl very exercised along the hog bench over there, Dave. Well, I think he was upset about that holding call inside because that just changes the entire complexion. Gosh, I mean, you've got first down on the two-yard line. Now he didn't get the play in. Now he's got to burn the timeout. And you can see him turn. He turned to one of his assistants and said, we cannot do that. And there's one of the players he was looking for to go in. Now, this is Lindy Lindsay, the tight end that's on the receiving end of this outburst. So timeout, 12.49 in the third. 13-7, but Arkansas driving. This year, IndyCar racing was dominated by one man, Al Unser Jr. And Arkansas, in their confusion, having to burn a timeout. 12.49 to go in the third. Third down and 13. Roby, the rolling pocket, too tall for Russell. Derek Russell had a couple of steps on Willie Mac Garza, the Texas nickelback. And on fourth down, Todd Wright, with the wind behind him, will try a long one for Crow and the Hogs to try and get him within three. He has missed from 46 and 40 yards today. His first misses of 1990. This is going to be right at 50. This would be the longest of his career by three yards. And 
And this one is good at a new career best for Todd Wright. And it's a 13 to 10 game. That ball would have been good from close to 60. That ball was way up when it crossed the goalpost. That wind, boy, that, that helped him a bunch on that kick because that kick was a long way into the back of the end zone, past the end zone. Arkansas with a very strong kicking game most of the year. Now right contributing to bring him within three. Jack Crow has a whole set of numerical formulas that he tries to follow with his offensive strategy week to week. Well, of course, Chris, the first one is one that he thinks is really important. Gain 100 more yards rushing, and the teams win 91% of all games. Balanced attack. Everybody talks about a balanced attack. The balanced attack teams only win 34% of the time, and if you make your opponent punt three times more than you do, the team that punts the least will win 75% of the games. I guess you call them Jack Crowisms. But that's right from the man, they, right there. They, they came up yesterday because we're talking about throwing the ball more, and in his case, like Grant Tanner Baylor, enjoying it less. And he said, well, you know, we had a very strong running attack. And we went 10-1 last year with two and three throwing the ball more this year, and another one way gone by Hines. So he said today he hopes will be the start of what we have turned this afternoon more Arkansas-like football, which is running, setting up, limited passing. The Arkansas scoring drive, only 20 yards, five plays in the best of Todd Wright's young career, and it's 13 to 10 Texas as they again take over at their own 20. Very important quarter for Arkansas to do as much as possible with the win behind it. Still outgained on the ground by almost 2-1. And Gardere on play action, way underneath, intended for Samuels. I think Scott, Scott Long, Long might have deflected that ball. Yeah, I think Long got his hands up as a rollout action, and Long got his hands up, tipped that ball down. They had to replace Mackenzie Phillips for Arkansas, who had to quit football because of an asthmatic condition, and then Long tears up a knee in their Fayetteville spring game. Only returned last week. Gardere, second and ten. All day, Keith Cash, first down and out of bounds at the 42. 22 yards with the coverage by Michael James and a key block by Adrian Walker. And you, you don't think that Gardere has confidence in Cash? He almost trips when he makes this move right here. He stumbles a little bit, but a nice move to get open. Again, that big target that we talked about, and Gardere has found him with great success today. Keith Cash in a mismatch with the middle linebacker, Albert Harris. About three steps on it. This is Samuels cut back midfield and maybe one more. Ben Floor from free safety made the tackle. This puts you in mind of his big gains on their scoring drive early. Yes, certainly does. I was watching particularly the linebackers on that play. Watch, here's the three linebackers. They just don't seem to be attacking right away. Right in there, you've got to come up. Right there, you see 57, Albert Harris. He gets pushed away. You can see they've got number 31. They've got him smoked in there. He, they're pushing him back. They're just controlling that the linebacker spot on that run. Pick up of seven, second and three. Walker. Very nice cutback move. Will be close for the first down as Chad Rowland comes up and makes the tackle for Arkansas. A guy who raised pigs in his high school future farmers of America group in Sherman, Texas. Something about fate has been mentioned. <laughs> Well, there's the play selection of Texas. 26 rushing plays, 18 passing, total 44 plays. That's a good balance. If, if you're looking for balance, I think Texas, again, they try to set up the, the pass using the run. So they've had good balance today. As they stretch it out, they need about the length of the football. Well, now we talked about Gardere playing free and easy. Is this the perfect time to fake that belly action in there and look downfield for a Johnny Walker? David McWilliams, maybe he may be kneeling down saying, yeah, that's a great play, and I'll say a little prayer for it. Well, of course, the only thing about that is they're into that win. Yeah, that's true. They almost likely go for the run to pick up the first down, keep a drive alive. 
Only wide out, Keith Cash in motion. And they spring Walker, drag down a big open field tackle at the 43-yard line by Curtis Banks, but Walker will move the chains for the Horns. Boy, Walker does a lot of this on his own. The line surge is pretty even. Watch the line surge here. Offense on the left, defense on the right, pretty even right in there. But Walker takes it, makes a great cut to get to the outside of the pile and picks up that first down. There's a jersey grab by Banks. Two big blocks. Sealing off that right side by Stephen Clark, the extra tight end, and Adrian Walker. Guard there sees an opening right up the middle to the 31-yard line, and another first down as Nick Thomas chases him down along with Ty Mason. Well, you don't think of a quarterback running the ball when he's had 29 runs and he's averaging minus 1.6 yards, but Gardair didn't even hesitate. Pulled that ball right down, found the seam, and picked up big yardage. First down on the 31. It's time to draw play for Walker. Off left tackle to 25, gain of about six on first down. Another tackle by Mason. And Dave is reminiscent of the scoring drive by Texas. They're really getting the big chunks on the ground. They really are. A lot of their runs are from what they call a sprint draw action. The back kind of sits, slides over, and takes the, the ball from the quarterback deep so that he has good vision to see where the seam is. And Walker's done it very effectively. A lot of those runs have been from that type of an action, almost a draw. Horns have a couple of backup wideouts in, but they keep it on the ground. Flag is down. Butch had not to the 10, to the 9. Curtis Banks with another saving tackle. They picked up the flag, and it's first down and goal to go. And David's the exact same action to a different player to had not. Watch this. Draw action. Slide, slide. There the quarterback brings it back. Now you let those big linemen open a hole, and boy, do they open a hole. It's almost as if Arkansas is overreacting, playing too quickly to get penetration, and they're getting turned. But a lot of Texas's runs have been from that draw action, sprint action draw. And not again. Not much. One at the most. Scott Long up from right tackle for the tackle. Second down and goal to go from the eight-yard line. They're right in the range where for the last three years, as you look at the length of the drive, the caches have usually been the targets. Oh, boy, and that one, that alley-oop pass, they have made that famous here in Texas. The alley-oop to Mr. Cash in the corner. Clock rolling, 9-17 to go third quarter. Right of your screen, Carry Cash inside of Keith. Gardere looking the other way. Into traffic and almost intercepted. It was intended for Chris Samuels. And Gardere really taking a chance by letting that one fly under pressure. Well, he was under a lot of pressure from Chad Rowland, but he never looked over this way to Cash. Watch, he looks only left. Sets back up, he's looking left right there. And he has to hurry it, and there's Roland coming in, 51, who just levels him. And watch Cash. We talked about him down at the bottom here. This is Kerry Cash. I think he's just about... Oh, boy, is he open. He looked open for a minute. Third and goal. Gardere may run it. Tucks it under. Touchdown, Texas. Peter Gardere.
happy to run for touchdowns, but I think if you ask Jack Crow and his staff who's the person that you least expect to run, they'd say Peter Gardner. We talked about it earlier, minus yardage per carry. He just tucks it down, slides in, and scores. First rushing touchdown of the year for Gardner, the third of his career. So at 8.59 to go in the third, the Horns by 10. Peter Gardner's eight-yard quarterback keeper. Ending an 11-play drive, 80 yards, 3 minutes and 39 seconds, and into the wind, a low wobbler by Pollock, fumbled by Aaron Jackson, and Caldwell picks it up at about the 7. And driven out of bounds near the 20. Well, we talked about how Arkansas had the running quarterback. And when need be, Texas has one, too. Absolutely. I think Virginia's taking control of that game again. And a little scare there in that first period, though. Mark with Dickerson as the tailback and offset to his left, E.D. Jackson. They want a new ball, so they get that one out of play. Two wide outs to the left. Bottom of your screen is Russell, and inside of him is Caldwell, who has the Arkansas touchdown. Ron Dickerson swarmed under at the 22. The serves led by Winfred Tubbs. And give him maybe two. James Patton has been shaken up, limping toward the Texas bench. And Todd Hunt, a sophomore from Richardson Pierce, was his replacement. Total yardage for the day, 258, 146. Texas has had a big edge all afternoon. Groby uncovered Derek Russell, waved it by. 78 yards. Boy, and credit Quinn Groby on this play because that was going to be an out. And as Groby rolled out, all of a sudden, Russell made that quick break, and he saw it, he made the adjustment and found him downfield. It wasn't the prettiest pass he'll ever throw, but it was one of the biggest ones he's had today, obviously, with, eight, what, 80 yards? Wow. Nice adjustment by Quinn Groby. Boy, they had battled and battled, except for two plays. And in each case... No semblance of coverage by the Texas secondary. All well from 33, Russell from 78 on his first catch of the day. Todd Wright to again make it a three-point game. Well, do you remember when you used to play street football, the old out and up? That's exactly what this looked like. It looked like the old out and up. You'll see Groby roll to, to our right, to his left. Now, right there, right there is the up. He turns back up. You can see the two Texas defenders go into each other, and there's nobody's ever going to catch him from that with that speed. That was a great shot of exactly what happened. Texas yep. defenders running into each other. Cavness and Barry. Right in here. Now, right there. See, you see them running right into him. They, they were thinking out on the play. And again, he just turns it up. And again, you're not going to catch him with the speed he has. Boy, great shots by producer David Hamlin, director Johnny Tyus. 8.03 to go, third quarter. Happy Hawk fans at Austin. Come on! Yeah. Russell making his entrance into this game rather late. But on a two-play drive, he takes it the last 78 yards and makes it a 20-17 game. Typical Texas-Arkansas. As we mentioned, the last six meetings decided by a touchdown or less, the average margin, four points. And the road team, as the ball blows off the tee, has won every game since 1984. And don't think they didn't think about that coming into this game. Arkansas, going through a difficult season, came in here saying, hey, the road team's won. We're the road team. We've got a good shot. Texas saying, let's keep it alive. Let's keep our streak going. We've really played well. competing with himself. How far past the end line can he get this one? This is about five yards beyond the back of the end zone. 
Quinn Brovey, a new Arkansas single-season touchdown record with his 12th touchdown pass of the year. That breaks the tie with Joe Ferguson from 71 and Ronnie South from 67. Not an amazing year, and it's just at the midpoint right now, and it's also for Derek Russell. His seventh touchdown catch of the year. He's one away from both the single-season record and the career record at Arkansas. Chris Samuels from tailback for about five. Texas on first down for the most part. Staying conservative, especially here in the second half. Second down. And four yards on the game by Samuels. Well, I think that Texas would be very happy with a drive. Nice conservative drive. Go the length of the field. Don't make a mistake. Don't fumble the ball. Throw an interception. Play conservative, but use up the clock and come down and get another score. Looking left, Johnny Walker. And for once, it's a routine grab in front of Curtis Banks for the Texas first down. They've, they've had trouble getting this guy open until today. They certainly have. He came in here. Everybody's saying, well, where's Johnny Walker been? Only came into this game with 15 receptions. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. Peter Gardera has got a lot of confidence in him. He's gone to him when he's been in trouble. He's gone to him when he's needed him. He's drawn an awful lot of double coverage, in, in particular last week against Oklahoma. Which had not weaving for one or two. Maybe more out across the 35. And Albert Harris making the tackle. Well, we talked earlier about Big Stan Thomas, number 51. There he is. Watch him come off the line here. Number 51, great drive blocker. Just boom, locks up. And look at the, look at him. Just drive back, make a pile. And you great offensive lineman, that's a plus. A great offensive lineman, a minus if you miss your assignment, a zero if you do your work, and a plus if you knock your man in the back. Well, had not got four. Guard there, a day and a half. Now Chase, and the ball is loose again. And the Razorbacks take over at the 30. Credit Ray Lee Johnson. Number 99, the backup linebacker. When he blitzes underneath, this is a great blitz. It's going to be right, right in front of you. It's just underneath. He cuts right underneath. Watch Gardere. He sees him right there. There's the blitz underneath. Boom, he's got him. He rips the ball out. He tackles the arm that Gardere had the ball in. And you just see the ball come free. Now watch. Underneath right there is the blitz. Gardere can't get out of it. He just rips it down. Scott Long with the Arkansas recovery. And the Hawks can think about taking the lead. Aaron Jackson. That one's loose. Texas has it right back. Winfred Tubbs. What a big play by Winfred Tubbs to come up with this, inter this fumble recovery. But let me tell you, the ball, somebody got an arm in there. We may be able to see it right here, but somebody got an arm and just ripped it out. I think it may have been Brian Jones. Just ripped the ball up. You see how it just flew right up in the air. Well, not a bad first defensive collegiate start for Winfrey Tubbs. Big sigh of relief if you're wearing orange in this stadium. And a big first down game for Samuels all the way to the 48. First down. well as they are. 13 yards for Sanders and the carry. And the reverse to Walker. Didn't fool enough Hawks, but he still manages to get midfield. Turns a near loss into a minor game. Collins with the tackle. Credit Ken Benson for turning it back inside. I thought Ken Benson got held that time, too. He was he was in a real tangle. Good fake here by Gardere. Fake the action right there. Boots it on the hip. 
again when he comes around here Benson is the only thing outside there he is and he races to the to the cutoff turns it back inside and again gets right back in on the tackle super play by Ken Benson number 42 Horse tried that one other time this year they get 22 yards out of it this time only two yards but it could have been worse might not get up too fast. He got hit right square in the chest. And he turned around as soon as the ball got there, the defender stuck him. That was Collins that came in and did that hit. Watch Cash. It's just going to be a little dump pass. It's going to come off the top, and it's just going to be a little bit of dump pass over top of the line. And when the ball gets there, you're going to see Kirk Collins come in there. Well, how'd he hold on to that one? Man who used to be the understudy of a huge hitter for Arkansas, Steve Atwater, and also Patrick Williams, junior from Lamarck, Texas. And as they continue to look at Kerry Cash, how much of that rests on Gardere for a floater, although into the wind, that he had to reach back for into the coverage? Well, that's that's true. It wasn't a zip pass. And when anytime you throw that ball, receivers will tell you when you catch the ball over the middle, they want the ball to get there in a hurry so that they don't they don't get hung out there to dry as as Cash did. He was reaching up for the ball and he was hung out. When Collins came across, Collins just like tackling a, a dummy, you know, the old practice dummy. You're just plow, he hits him. Mississippi and Houston continuing their dominance today. Kerry Cash, some of the Washington Lions with Williams, makes his way to his feet. And with only a slight limp, will walk off. I think that limp is more trying to get the air back in, kind of going, getting a deep breath. Well, that was a great shot of the three running buddies from San Antonio Walker and the two Cashes. That must have been quite a high school team to have both Cashes and Johnny Walker on the same team. And Wilbur Owens and with the yeah. Washington. They tried to talk him into following into Austin. He wouldn't do it. Third and one. Braylon Johnson in motion. Adrian Walker did not get it. And Arkansas saying another fumble recovery. I think they were signaling first down. They may have been signaling fumble recovery. They're all up doing the high fives and everything. Referee calling for his time. But again, when you see that seam and you know you only have to get one yard, you have got to put your head down and get it. Texas will punt to the displeasure more than 72,000. On uh, fourth and about one, Alex Waits will kick to Tracy Caldwell back in his 10. And Waits in the first half did a great job for the most part boring it underneath the wind. Well, listen, he's got to be perfect down at the six yard line. For much more, Jeff Higgins downing it at that point, 37 yards by Waits. And 416 to go in the third. Still Texas fight for Texas. Midway third period. Briefly they led by 10. Then Russell from 78 yards from Grovey. And from their own seven, the Hawks give to Aaron Jackson. He's out of an ankle tackle by Richard all the way to the 14-yard line where Tubbs was there to greet Aaron Jackson, the senior from Denison, Texas. Iowa coming back on number 10, Michigan. And the time of possession, like most of the stats today, very much in the, the favor of the Horns. Second and three, Jackson again might have lost some yardage this time. Shane Dronet and Tommy Jeter with help from Anthony Curl. And you control it at the point of attack where that play is designed to go through line of scrimmage. And you make that back start to make that turn, there's just nowhere to go. They've been pursuing well. Texas has just played just a wonderful game on defense. Great pursuit by their linebackers and their line to get to the ball. That's why they're stopping. That's why they just haven't been able to break that big one up the middle that Arkansas is so known for. Hogs with two tight ends. They take 
Both Caldwell and Russell out. And they are 0 for 7 on third down. They need two. Groby with it. Stanley Richard at the 15. Well, would you call that a hog tie? I think you would call that a hog tie. I think you call that a hog tie. We talked about the senior leadership of Stanley Richard. Watch this. He doesn't give Quinn Groby an inch. Boom. He just hog ties him down. That's a hit worthy of some of the guys you talked about at the outset. That's a Jerry Gray or a Johnny Johnson type of hit. Absolutely. So Glenn Ray Hines with the win. Sales won to Katniss at the 35. All the way to midfield and into hog territory. 50 yards on the kick. 17 on the return. Banks made the tackle. With the conclusion of today's game, David, I will announce the Southwest Airlines player of the game. Stay with us for that. Long way to go. 2-11 of the third quarter. 20-17 to 17, Texas. And if you're Texas, you don't want to get conservative. You want to be conservative somewhat, but you've still got, it's not time to draw in all the fences and just say, okay, we're going to just try to eat up the clock. They led by six at the half. Right there. Thinking about going long, out of one tackle, and finally manages midfield. He will lose probably a couple underneath Scott Long after escaping Chad Rowland. You know, one of the things, if we look at Chad Rowland there, he's the one that got the initial pressure on Peter Gardere. He's just going to sneak through here, but really, again, we talked that Arkansas didn't have a whole lot of sacks coming into this game. I think they only had three sacks. They've got four today. Got four today. They're putting great pressure on Gardere. Yeah, they've had trouble getting turnovers as well. They've had no trouble getting turnovers today. Second and 11. Swing pass. Bill Brown struggling forward. It might have got past the first down line of scrimmage. It'll be third and long. Kirk Collins up to make the hit. Number 29 against number 29. You know, after the first couple of games Texas played this year, it looked like Bill Brown was going to be their bell cap. He might carry 20, 30 times a game. But McWilliams and Lynn Abity, the offensive coordinator, obviously deciding there's too much talent to concentrate on beating one guy to bed. Oh, absolutely. When you have one guy carries the ball that many times and he gets hurt, it's quite a drop-off because the other person has no experience. Third and eight. Johnny Walker all alone. First down to the 30. What a day for the senior from San Antonio home. And he comes up limping. Let's watch this pass protection. Let's see why they're not getting in there. That's 77. That's Chad McMillan. I think he's about, oh, I believe he might, that, he might call that holding a little bit. I definitely call it holding. I'm an old defensive tackle. But it wasn't. But it wasn't called. Well, with Walker having to limp off, Derek Duke, the sophomore from Houston Reagan, has checked into the game and goes wide left. On first and ten. Chris Samuels right up the middle to the ten-yard line. Some of the best blocking by either team all day on this one. I watched Dwayne Miller, 53 that time. He just roared up through the hole. When you've got big blockers out in front of you and you watch Dwayne Miller just clean them out in there, Samuels never breaks stride. I mean, it's just like you're running against no one in there. 20 yards. Oh, what a run. Chris Samuels said, hey, listen, you talked a lot about Phil Brown. Walker had not. Don't forget me. Nope. Not today. You can't. That's the end of the third quarter. to 17 back after this from your local station this is the Raycon Sports and Entertainment Network Pro fourth quarter will begin with Texas looking at first down 
from the Arkansas 10-yard line. I think by a matter of inches, they could theoretically make a first down without a touchdown, but virtually it is goal to goal, and they lead it 20 to 17. Through three quarters, look at the edges in every category. 13 more first downs. Look at the rushing yardage, 196 to 64, and we thought Arkansas would come in and really try to dominate the running game. Turnovers, Texas four. But their defense is held because actually Arkansas has made nothing off of those four turnovers. Ronnie Walker still out of there as the kick goes to Adrian Walker inside the five yard line. I want to tell you, when you run up the middle like that, you have got to have great blocking. And they are really getting it. Boy, Todd Smith, Dwayne Miller up in there. Watch the middle right here. Look right there. There's the block down. Here comes Miller on the trap. Boom. And look at that. I mean to tell you, they've got holes up there. You can drive a pickup truck through. Ben Floor and Kirk Collins stopping Adrian Walker at the two-yard line. Full house backfield. Phil Brown. He got belted by Floor. Maybe a slight loss on what was a second down play and this play will be the eighth play in this drive and they have the ball marked at about the one and a half yard line looks like we got a hurt player down there is that jeff boyd 58 it is starting right guard from the building sophomore from fort worth western hills Many blue chip recruits assembled by McWilliams. Chad McMillan replacing Boyd. Here we go, third down. Touchdown, Adrian Walker. from Tyler Chapel here. Well, you see, there's just a matchup of the big line, and Walker just goes airborne from about four yards out and turns sideways and slices in. 27-17, we're back after these messages from Southwest Airlines. 